Hi, John Gordeen, CEO of Sound Device MD, an agency partner with Global Premier Benefits. Today's topic is five tips for better time management. Now, key thing here is we're human beings. You've probably seen or had the opportunity to watch a billion videos on this topic, books, whatever, okay? Um, what I want to do is keep it simple and really focus in the world of insurance. First thing I want to emphasize here is, again, we're human beings. We are all subject to making mistakes in terms of how we manage our time. So the first bullet is don't beat yourself up. At some point in time, you have to recognize that you are not going to be perfect every day. The opportunity is, hey, how do I do better the next time or this time? If you missed your goal yesterday, hey, don't waste another minute worrying about what happened yesterday. Don't beat yourself up. Go to work today. Work on a better solution today. Which brings me to the second bullet. Make a plan. Okay, the world is going to change. Every day, you should go into your day with a plan, an itemized list of this are the, these are the things that I have to accomplish today. One of the main things a lot of agents miss is revenue generating activity. There's all kinds of things that need to be done. I've got to do my CE credits. I've got to renew my license. I've got to post this ad. I've got to do all these other things. But at the heart of it all, there's the revenue generating activity, the things that make you money. And as a salesperson, there's nothing that generates revenue like talking to customers. That should be one of your number one priority is making time and a plan for being in front of customers. So whether it's every day, twice a week, whatever your plan is, you should have a structured plan that is uninterrupted that allows you to focus on those core functions, being on the phone, being in front of customers, however you sell, you have to make a plan for that, okay? Third bullet, motivation is not the most important thing. Consistency is. A lot of times, you know, agents, I get asked this question, hey, you know, John, you work a lot, you know, even when you travel, you're, 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 you're always upbeat and you're always, you know, um, moving forward. And the question becomes, hey, how do, you, how do you stay motivated? And the answer to that question is, I don't. I'm not always motivated. But I know that I have to do what I have to do. And I'm consistent in doing that. That's the most important. It doesn't matter whether you wanted to do it or not. Motivated, hey, I'm, I'm pumped up and I'm ready to do this. Okay, you're not always going to feel that way. But you know you have to do it. And that's the most important element. It, it's easy to do things when you're motivated and you're, you're, you're excited about doing it. The hard part is doing things that you know need to be done when you don't feel that way. And that's where the true measure comes in. That's where consistency is really measured. So again, motivation is good to have. You want to be motivated, but it's better to be consistent, okay? Fourth bullet, set yourself up to win. Now, sometimes we get very motivated and we're excited and pumped up and we set these huge goals. Now, again, I understand we're human. We want to be, accomplish big things, but if you want to be consistent, then you need to have a reasonable measure for what that success is going to be. Let me give an example. Let's say I'm, I'm a, a marathon runner, okay? And let's say my best time ever in a mile is four minutes. Do I want, that's my best time, okay? So if I am practicing every day, do I want the focus on my exercise to be breaking a record every day? Or do I want to set myself up to get a win? Hey, what can I do on a regular basis that I know I can accomplish? Maybe it's four and a half minute mile. I'm just throwing a number out there. Clearly, I'm not a marathon runner. <laughs> um, but the key thing there is now that's what allows you to be consistent because you're not killing yourself every day. And what it leaves you is room for discretionary effort. Hey, if my goal is four and a half minutes and I'm feeling good today and I'm going to go for 3.9 today, if I fail and I want to do 4.1, it's not a failure. I've still accomplished my goal. I just haven't met my discretionary effort goal. Okay? So, again, it allows you to set yourself up for a win. You want to be consistent. How does that apply in the sales world? Okay? 
if you normally on a, on a day-to-day basis look at what you're doing today and you're making, I don't know, for a round figure, 100 calls a day, is it realistic to expect that you're overnight going to double that, make two or 300 calls in a day, and then now you, you fail on a, on a regular basis because you're not meeting the goal? But if you're normally doing 100, now you're doing 125, 130, 140, 150 calls, isn't that really a win? Aren't, are you not doing more than you normally would have done? So you want to set yourself up for a win, and in that way, anything above and beyond that goal you set for yourself is your discretionary effort you have the opportunity to do more. So, with all that effort, that brings me to the last bullet. Reward yourself. Okay, if you're really going after it like that, there's got to be a carrot for you. What do I get for all this extra effort? You want to make sure you said something. It doesn't have to be anything big. Hey, you know, maybe if I, if I make my calls today, I get an apple pie or whatever, something that's important to you. I get to go to the golf course on Saturday. Hey, if I hit my, if I hit my daily goal, um, I get to take the kids to the movies on Saturday. Whatever is going to move you and be something that's going to be motivating for you, you got to set something up for yourself to reward yourself for that behavior. So I hope you found this helpful. For th more information on this tip and others, give me a call, 443-979-8412 or you can visit me online at www.joinsamd.com.